This is uh, Chicho. Today is October 1st, 2019, and we're doing a live stream on investing in personal finance, open discussion. Uh, we've done a few of these as before, uh, so we're just gonna chill, uh, wait until people start rolling in. And it is open discussion, so we can talk about anything, and personal finance is economics, economics and politics go hand in hand. So a little bit of politics, for sure, allowed uh, in the discussion. We'll, we can talk about it, for sure. If it goes down the rabbit hole too far, then uh, that's going to be more on the political live streams that we have, the current events live streams that we have. So we'll try to keep almost everything, uh, all the discussions, more on a economic slant to them. Uh, aside from that, welcome to the stream. Mm -hmm. I got tea. I've got to have some uh, some drinks and some munchies and whatnot. Cornelian cherry liqueur. And you can see a couple of the cornelian cherries there in the, in the drink. I made this about three weeks ago and it's two weeks ago through it. It's brilliant. It's really good. This is one of the few liqueurs that's flavor sinks in really fast within two weeks, three weeks is delicious. Daniel, how are you doing? Welcome, welcome. I hope you're having a good evening, morning, afternoon. I'm afternoon, Pacific West Coast. Got some uh, tahini here. maple syrup and uh, sourdough bread different bread than yesterday's uh, snack that we had yesterday's snack was like sort of seedy bread this is sourdough bread and this is the tahini this is the tahini super delicious great thing to have for the fall and whatnot got another spoon different spoon to scoop out the Cornelian cherries. Actually, let's pop one right now. Let me show you. There's a couple of Cornelian cherries in there. Right? I'm gonna pop one. It's got the seed in it, so doing well. UK, no night, so nighttime. Good evening, then, brother. Good evening. For some reason, almost all the other liqueurs I've made, the fruit really takes on the alcohol flavor. For this one, the Cornelian cherries haven't taken on the alcohol flavor, not yet anyway. Turing News, how are you doing? Thank you for uh, wanting to collaborate, by the way. We can do the video via Discord or some other simple way. And the topics would be of your choice. I would just be asking questions and listening to explain what you, you'd like. Um, for sure, Twitch, uh, Turing News. Uh, just for those watching, uh, Turing News uh, sent me a message. Uh, he's been following our politics, economics stuff, live streams for a bit, and he's been raiding with some of his party, uh, some of his viewers, and uh, he sent me a message asking if you know I'd be into collaboration, doing a doing a live stream together, and I I said for sure I'm all in, you know, all for dialogue. Uh, so uh, we're gonna try to arrange it so we end up doing sort of a discussion, I guess, uh, or Q and A, uh, and uh, we're not sure where we're gonna get to you when we'll do it, but hopefully sooner rather than later. If it's, we'll have to do one test run touring, uh, touring news. Uh, and just because I've never done a video, video anything on Discord with anyone, video or audio. So we'll do a test run, uh, you know, maybe even a week or a month. I don't know how long it's gonna take for me to sort it out for my end. 
short-term bonds are more profitable so recession is coming um possibly recession should have it came it should have stuck with us for a while but then they flooded the flooded the the world <laughs> with money their own people with money so all of a sudden everything seems to be okay because everybody's got a sort of a job where unemployment is really low for some some people are encountered if you take all the data right is it negative interest rates recession for sure we're overdue is it going to be a recession or is it going to be a hardcore economic crash or is it going to be a slow slow you know it's like boiling the frog right so people really don't notice that you know over a 10 15 year period that their lives have changed a lot right they don't notice usa is doing good these days they are they are right why the question right there, there are answers for sure it seems stable is very strong here in india economy is stagnant india is in trouble uh, from what i understand turning jason very cool whatever the time frame is good for you i will be there yes keep in touch okay touring news uh, let me know where you're from as well La uh, touring news where you're located what's your time zone i'm pacific on canada united states so we'll have to figure it out i'm okay doing any time uh in a 24-hour clock cycle right for me it doesn't it doesn't matter i can wake up in the middle of the night and do yeah. all hey chicho how are you doing hey all how are you doing or i should have said hi chicho and i sort of said how are you doing all that? You did two days in a row. Two days or three days. I'm glad the quadratic stuff helped you out yesterday, man. Uh, I hope it helps. I hope it gives you a better understanding of maximum, minimum problems and what the quadratic function does and what that point really means, right? I live in uh, Philadelphia. Okay, so easy. Haha, uh -huh, yes. Uh, anytime works for me. Okay, awesome, brother. We do. Uh, yeah i'm excited it's cool i like uh, i've had just just so you know touring uh, news dante how you doing how's life uh, just so that you uh, to let you know and everybody else here know i guess i've had a few people over the years contact me right uh, you know i've done interviews with some people i've never done collaboration on the scene no actually we did a podcast where there was q a with me and that was those were radical uh, i forget the it's in my blog i've posted it and we're mainly focusing on education uh, um, and um, just lost my train of thought for a second and we're mainly focusing on education right um, and uh, and i had some i've had some people contact me for mathematics specifically i've had some people contact me for comic books i've had some people contact me for personal finance right and i've always said yes uh, to all of those interviews or collaborations or well meaning mini, very little collaboration but interviews q a sessions and stuff like this um because i fully like uh, one of the reasons we're doing all these different types of streams is because i believe in dialogue so it's dialogue that i that i believe is the answer to a lot of our problems uh, a lot of the issues that we have in the world economically politically socially whatever it might be okay so touring news thank you for the invite really uh, that was my long way of saying thank you <laughs> i'm doing good yes yesterday helped a lot thanks again my pleasure Olive. my pleasure i cover a lot of international news Mid uh, middle east relations macroeconomics currency trade patterns etc so a lot of stuff we talk about cool so i'm just reaching out to people that i think will have interesting things to share okay brother sounds good to me sounds good to me fun there's a lot of stuff going on economically huge there's uh, like right now economically and people i hope people are thinking about this in terms of personal finance that the world is in huge politically and economically major major transitional period and that is going to affect many many people uh 
across many generations a lot of like every generation is going to be affected by what's going on in the economy uh, globally locally uh, what's going on with currency money trade tariffs uh, conflicts resources uh, the environment on every front on every front as uh, from the UK birdie just saw your uh, comment finally made a twitch account to catch a stream awesome thanks for being here birdie um, but as uh, was it? Da, 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 uh, regarding the interest rates I forget who it was uh, regarding interest rates so short-term interest rates right now are higher than long-term interest rates right I believe that was the comment Da, da, da. profitable recession short-term bonds are more profitable profitable so recession is coming right so short-term interest rates are higher than long-term interest rates sometimes greatly so the shorter you go it seems like the higher the interest rate so people are not really necessarily uh, thinking the recession is coming I think just the rate I think people are thinking that a crash is coming Okay. US China trade war is what making it difficult for every country but working in favor of US. Um I don't think it's just the US China trade war. Uh, I don't think that's the only thing at play here. Uh, that's the mantra that people are holding on to. Uh, but there's a lot of other things in play. A lot of other things in play. US China trade war if you want to call it. It is corporate war. We put out a little short video. We talked about it in last week's political uh, stream, but I cut that up and put that up. I think the most recent video on uh, YouTube and YouTube is the one, right? Uh, it's corporate wars, and there's within corporations there's huge uh, challenges at play. See Thin Classic. Welcome, welcome to stream and thank you for the tier one sub. Hello, I changed my name on Twitch. You changed your name on Twitch. What was your name on? Uh... So this is this this is the first time I've seen uh, Sethin Classic. I don't think I've uh, read your name before. Two months though. So there is uh, aside from the trade wars. Oh. Randall, how are you doing? <laughs> Trying to keep me on my toes. I've never read so many names in my life before uh, as I have doing, doing these live streams on Twitch. Trying to get familiar with people's names. Uh, aside from the US-China trade war, there's also uh, automation kicking in in such a huge way that people are sort of being caught off guard uh, because it's coming so fast and it has come in very fast the automatic bank tellers the automatic um, cashiers at grocery stores and whatnot there's automated factory sorters and automated driving cars are going to be towards the last end in my opinion of the first wave of automation kicking in right um, you know there's automation there's currency uh, issues in the world right now which is one of the reasons the US dollar uh, seems to be the strongest currency in the world right now right it's gained relative to every other currency as far as uh, I've looked into it anyway a couple of layers I don't know I can't remember what the Russian rupee has done uh, it's gained in value I believe I mean there's a period where it was in inflation in Russia in the 90s was into the thousands wasn't it? it was crazy it was crazy a lot of stuff going on not sure even where it began the repo rate was interesting right now people yeah it's called inverted yield curve yeah it's the inverted yield curve right but right now there's that's been the case short-term interest rates go up long-term goes down so 
people are saying there's more risk in the markets, right, for the short term. But the short term interest rates aren't just going up. It's crossed it, Ooh, like this, long term short. But the repo rate, which is just the overnight lending rate, basically, in very yield curve predicted 2008 crash. Yeah, it's predicted other crashes as well, right? But we're not just talking like the repo rate. From what I understand, it went from two and a half percent, three percent to ten percent overnight. Not just one day. For a few days, right? So if you take the long term rate being negative for many places was zero, and slowly, I'm not sure, you know what the short term rate is for one year in uh, debt you're gonna take on or six month debt or whatever I because I don't, right? But if you take a look at the long term interest rate, which is basically zero, and the repo was ten percent, right? Is the graph like this, or is it a hockey stick, right? So if it's going like this, did the inverted yield curve, did the repo rate jump up that high before the 2008 crash? And that was a crash, right? Did it also do the same in 2000, right? Did it also do the same in 1988, 87, right? 87, 86, 88, right? Did it go like this or was it gradual? If all the other three, four, whatever recessions, 10 recessions we look at, if the inverted yield code curve goes above the long term rate, right? Was it linear or was it? If none of the other ones were this, then it's not a recession we're going into. It's yeah, dot com bubble in two thousand. Yeah, and here's the thing, right? I know in two thousand, right? The Federal Reserve in the United States raised interest rates like this, right? In the 1990s, they had a really low, fairly low, right, reasonable or whatever you want to think about it, right, on the low side. And then when the dot com, when the, when the stock market, nah, NASDAQ was starting to go exponential, right, logarithmic, if you want to think about it. It wasn't really logarithmic, exponential, right? Or it was an exponential log, semi log scale, right? They raised interest rates. I forget, I lost the count. I forget what it was. Like they would get together. Sometimes there's raising the interest rate for the first two or three times, like fifty basis points, and then a base was put a base, and then fifty basis point. They they took the interest rates from like three four percent or three percent up to seven eight percent. Right. That had a lot to do with it. Possible recession. The Federal Reserve has been raising interest rates for the last year now they're starting to kick it down again right so did that trigger did that break the camel's back because if everybody's leveraged to the tails and interest rates go from one percent let's say they go from two percent that they're paying to four percent their interest rate just doubled that's a huge burden to take on that's one that was one of the one of the catalysts for the dot-com bubble bursting so disastrously for so many people right to these how are you doing hey buddy anyone ever tell you you look like putin and trotsky <laughs> no no <I'm> this <just> really. <laughs> you would be the first <laughs> oh, funny. i don't even know why it's... yeah i don't even know what trotsky looked like And to these, thank you for the Twitch Prime sub. I love you, man. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Do you think Donald Trump should be credited for economy or it's just natural? Natural. There's nothing natural about our economy right now. There's absolutely nothing natural about our economy. Can you do a dance for No, brother, I can't do a dance right now. I can do finger dance. There you go. 
Right. What are you drinking today? This is uh, the Cornelian Cherry Liqueur. <laughs> this is Cornelian Cherry Liqueur. I'm pulling this up so it doesn't drip over because it's sweating a little bit. It's very delicious. I made this thing. Um, I've shot the video. I haven't, I haven't edited it uploaded yet, right? But it's Cornelian Cherry. Uh, you're going to see us making the liqueur. And within three weeks, let's say, the flavor is phenomenal. Phenomenal. One of the most beautiful liqueurs I've ever made. Really. So good. So good. I don't see the resemblance of this. It's, I don't either, personally. Not to put in any way. Maybe it's the ball that I don't know. You don't know how much the finger dance means to me. It means to me, man. I just got out of a rough breakup with my girl. Oh, no. It's okay, man. Once you... A certain relationship ends, there's a void in your life, you fill the void with new relationships. Sometimes, the new relationships aren't as delightful as the old ones. Many times, you've learned your life lessons, and your new relationships are much, much grander than the previous one, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, no, we're going to deny. You're not allowed to say that. Be nice, kebabs, okay? Deny. <laughs> yeah, no. Really, there's lots of streamers, I'm pretty sure, kebabs, that you can go and enjoy yourself there, right? Really? I got nothing against what you want to do. It's just not my thing, right? And I don't think it's anybody's thing here that's here there's lots of other places online that you can do that right you don't want to do the same thing if you i'm pretty sure you're doing that in other places but you don't want to do the same thing everywhere you go you have to have different things you do in different places amazing color amazing color amazing flavor so Donald Trump is making big changes. We only hear about negative stuff. Donald Trump has made big changes for sure, for sure. Another Chicho live streams. We're being spoiled. <laughs> Wade, how are you doing? Wade's world, world X. Yeah, Donald Trump has made changes. Anybody that says many negative, some positive, right? All those people that. As soon as you say something about Trump, if you're not saying that he's the embodiment of evil incarnate or something, they, they think you're supporting. Like, it's the weirdest. Right now, the world is people are so traumatized uh, that they, they're not making the connections. I work early. Happy to catch a Chicho stream. Sleepy waves. How are you doing? Congrats. I'm getting out of work early. Let's have a salute to that. Dangerous. Dangerous. Yeah, man. The world is really polarized. Crazy. And you know what the polarization is? It's not polarization of this extreme versus this extreme. The polarization right, right now in the world is extremists versus those who say you're crazy, right? Extremists on the right, extremists on the left, extremists on the center, extremists everywhere, right? People are taking on the extremist mentality. And then there's the other side which is much small. Oh, no, not necessarily. There's a lot of people that I know personally that don't understand this extremist mentality. And on the other side is people who realize extremism breeds fascism. It's crazy, right? Most people that go extreme, they've been traumatized, right? It's a psychological issue. 
So whenever you see someone that having is having a nervous breakdown and they and nervous breakdowns and life and the stresses and stuff, that's part of living, right? But right now, bipolar, sure, extremists versus people who aren't extremists, who think the extremists are crazy. What's your opinion, Andrew Yang's freedom, freedom dividend? Uh, you mean the uh, all of the basic income? Uh, I I think it's, I don't agree with it. I don't agree with it. If we, we're talking about basic income, basic income, what it's going to do is going to centralize power. Okay. Uh, two phases. It might be a band aid solution for short term. Really, it it might be some kind of solution short term to get people a little bit boost out of poverty like doop, right but the basic income uh, UBI but pay for it with a VAT and cut welfare what's the VAT stand for uh, Dante anyone who falls where well, this is an, is an imbecile universal you know, yeah what's the VAT VAT but, but basically uh, value uh, yeah value on the tax <laughs> I can't welfare yeah and healthcare right they want to introduce tax on every good tax on every good value added tax value thank you for that okay so value added tax and they want to kill, kill welfare they want to kill healthcare Medicare wherever you are different types of healthcare so they would give you your universal basic income and say everything else you're paying for right and on top of everything else, taxes on everything again, right? Uh, no. And short term, it'll give everybody a little boost. And as soon as people realize their money is losing value, real value over time, they realize that UBI does not go up at the same rate as investments in Wall Street and stuff like this, where there's differential accumulation within weeks months maximum years people are going to find out they are serfs but worse right that is is on everything here in india but india must have a economic system that is just cash based right I'm pretty sure India is like that. China used to be like that, but no longer. China, everything's gone digital, so it's it's the worst of the worst in terms of totalitarian control systems, right? Uh, India has a huge underground economy, from what I understand. Um, yeah. So service doesn't need to be taxed. Any place that. The central governments are telling everyone to, they want to make all currency digital, is you're done for, right? Yeah, it's changing, but not as fast as China. Yeah, that's ultimate, one of the pinnacles, one of the things that totalitarian states require uh, for people is to give up their anonymity their freedom their sovereignty of currency of trade of barter system right uh, that way they can tax everything everything they can tax every flush you make on the toilet right when technology kicks in and control everything if you live in a country where that is rolling out it's going to take a while some places faster than others right if you're in a place where you've reached that point where that is being introduced and they're bringing universal basic income, you have about a handful of years to get your personal finances in order and make sure you're protecting your family and your loved one from what's coming right and maybe start looking if you can't change the political system in your country start looking uh, to other countries to immigrate to 
tangentially related to investing, but what sort of investments in technology and gear are you looking to purchase for your YouTube Twitch video videos within the next year? Just curious. Um, Daniel, uh, I need to like just a hardcore computer, desktop computer that has coolants, multiple drives, internal drives, so major hardware for the personal computing that I can hook everything up to. Like, so that hardware is gonna run you a few thousand dollars, right? That's one of the things. For sure I'm looking, I will be getting mics, uh, camera and stuff as well. I don't need lighting here where I am because I have a lot of different types of lamps and stuff. I can, my eye is pretty good for lighting so I can set things up properly, okay? Uh, but I'm not gonna know exactly what I need until uh, I mess around with these systems a little bit more, okay? Because at some point I want to start live streaming on YouTube as well, specifically related to comic book stuff, or live stream both on YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Let's call it that. And I do want to look into the podcasting stuff, right? I wouldn't mind, because people have been asking me for a while now to uh, start doing a podcast, and I consider these, these to be sort of podcasts. So look into that. Thank you for a follow bit suitcase. Eight eight bit suitcase. Eight bit suitcase. So there's a lot of hardware basically right now. Aside from that, once that's set up, we'll get you know, get modules ready to go. I need to bring people in for the back end to set up the website, set up the interfaces for this and that, and do some of the graphics and like there's a lot. I'm here for the long haul. China has draconian social credit system. It's scary to even think about it. Agreed. I would not want to live there. Okay, I'm moving to Canada. Canada is further away than the Scandinavian countries from going digital. It's way further away from uh, China, like not even close. And in Canada, to a certain degree, we have a little bit more rights in regards to privacy than the United States. Some some not it's gone draconian going in that direction anyway totalitarian in canada uh, faster than i would like personally do i think the u.s currency is going to drop no no i think u.s currency is going to keep on getting stronger for the next few years anyway i don't know what it's going to do within the next you know let's say five years from now or ten years from now but within the next two three four years i think it's going to keep on increasing in value or being a preferred place to park i prefer streams over podcasts now th for me i'm sort of thinking about this wouldn't you consider this dante would you consider this to be uh, a podcast as well it's just a live podcast that we're doing um, or podcast necessarily has to be interviews with other people and stuff sleepy waves dollar is the strongest currency right now yeah I want something to work on every day that I can make money with but I don't know what to do are you handy mr. one Bitcoin are you a handy person what do you predict Bitcoin Bitcoin would act if a stock crash happened uh, I think Bitcoin would crash as well it might get a little blip but if the stock market crashes right fully crashes I don't think Bitcoin is going to go through the roof I think people are, the whole world is pretty much leveraged right now so people aren't going to have the money to buy a virtual currency a digital currency a cryptocurrency when they need to pay the bills all right so I think people might panic a little bit and try to take out cash one of the other reasons is because if there's a major stock market crash, it needs to be major. There's going to be a lot of smart money waiting for the little blips to happen. And they're going to be picking up pieces, right? So I think that we, it might shoot up. Bitcoin might shoot up, right? It might shoot up just a short term. But uh, it will meet major resistance with people dumping. 
to take because if something goes up 100 percent, so let's say bitcoin goes up 200 percent, right it's trading at 8,000 let's go let's say it breaks a previous high 20,000 goes to 24,000 right it's gone up triple let's say the stock market has dropped by 50 percent right now you could you could hold on to this and hope for five times return or you could go hey stock market just dropped 50 percent i'm going to pick up some of that stuff so if you had any bitcoins would you not go pull the trigger get the money out and pick up some of the loose pieces here yeah but podcasts are generally pre-programmed uh, and there's no chat interaction oh yeah um podcast no chat interaction yeah i guess so it doesn't uh joe Ro uh, rogan or jimmy do uh, jimmy dory i don't think does maybe she uh, they do but jimmy dory has a couple of people that uh, he he does jimmy dory podcast he live streams or audiences i don't know what he, what he does right or he interviews people uh there's a couple of people reading tweets and chats and stuff i really like the chat so i if i did podcasts i would definitely keep the chat going um and if i did podcasts i think i would just live stream it. that way you're doing uh one job with triple the return right which is sort of personal finance i like layering my work so if i did a podcast right i would live stream at the same time which would be on twitch and then i would upload to youtube and BitChutes, which would be video sites and i would have the podcast right so that's triple you know do one thing to triple the benefit i'm kind of handy but i'm not a carpenter so mr mr one bitcoin if there's something you want to do on a daily basis find out what you love doing you're you're okay spending a lot of time with and try to incorporate that into your life and see where you can generate money if you like if you're not handy if you don't make things like you said you wanted to do something make something every day to make money if you like painting just live stream painting make videos upload them right uh, start like education is one place that's booming right and it's going to be booming for a long time to come i sort of got a feel of that like 15 years ago when i realized that our current centralized education system is not just bad but it's completely collapsing right which is one of the reasons i started doing these videos the math stuff and content like that so start sharing information because education in, is a, is a sector of the industry which is going to be booming for many years to come so if you have some knowledge you want to share and just play around worst case scenario worst case scenario you acquire new tools you acquire new powers right you learn technology that's benefit to you right that's investing in yourself i should have invested in bitcoin in 2012 yeah but here's here's the thing uh I'm sure. if you bought in 2012 or 2011 when bitcoin was let's say a dollar right or less than a dollar or pennies right would you have held on to all your bitcoins would you have held on to all your bitcoins no absolutely not if you bought at a dollar the odds are you probably ha sold half your holdings when bitcoin went from like less than a dollar to thirty dollars the first pop right at least half and then came down to three and then from three went up to above a hundred so if you still had some at 30 and when you saw it go down to three would you buy some maybe i would right and it went above 100 would you have kept all your bitcoins we you sold half the odds are if you had 100 bitcoins in 2011 2012 with all the ups and downs the odds are you probably only have one or two left right now right so forget about thinking about you wish you had bought bitcoins in 2012 okay you should think about what would you do with money if you had right now to invest fear is always strong stronger than greed whole world fiat and over leverage for sure they are yeah the whole world is in a bubble 
but can the bubble go on sure so you need to be an expert in bitcoin because as much as bitcoin fluctuate uh, fluctuates still has relative rules and st stability yeah you need to be you need to have delved down into the systems and cryptos aren't the same as they were in 2011 2010 cryptos in 2010 2011 you could have easily sold them in the open market and cashed out and stuff like that right now as soon as you convert to fiat currency there's a node there's a track record of everything you can make phone calls to back dealer bitcoin sellers where or crypto sellers where you can meet them in person they give you cash certain percentage on every bitcoin you transfer you know they give you cash you transfer for bitcoins and stuff like this but it is what it is jimmy Dore has uh, sidekicks uh, they read his chat yeah people do podcasts on Twitch all the time yeah I would assume they would be doing it for sure he would have sold at 10 dollars <laughs> if you bought a dollar if you didn't sell some of your holdings at 10 dollars then you're a noob right because if you buy anything at a dollar it goes up 10 times you're gonna liquidate some of it you'd be foolish not to What kind of financial courses do you suggest people to study for practical? Uh, practical, I, I would say if you want to get a feel for economics, finance, how our current economic system works, I wouldn't necessarily say take a course because I haven't taken a course. Well, no, I have taken a course in the past, like accounting and stuff and business. I register in a business program stuff. But right now, if I wanted to learn about economics and personal finance and stuff like this, I would go online and start reading. Figure out which branch of the economy you're interested in, right? If you're interested in the stock market, go to some websites and just, and you don't even need to register, right? Just look at some companies, look at the ratios, because economics, first of all, finance is just ratios, return on investment, PE, uh, your beta, just whatever, everything, right? With stocks related anyway start learning about the ratios and just start looking at the charts right every day spend an hour reading economic news coming out and not just coming out from CNN and crap like you know just feed from the companies themselves look at their stocks and just get a feel for how the econ economy works how stocks be stocks behave relative to news releases sit in on news conferences your quarterly or yearly reports that public companies do okay if you're interested in anything that's public anyway you can do that if you're not interested in anything that's public if you're interested in certain types of products figure out who makes these products that you're interested in and follow them as companies may they be private or public see what they're doing are they expanding right right now with the internet with the information at our disposal you don't need to take any financial courses you just need to decide uh, which system you're interested in spending a certain amount of time in and learn the economics of that system if, are you interested in collecting art figure out look at charts and see how the prices of certain art collectibles and stuff goes up relative to time, relative to their discipline or the age, the year, um, where they're located, which countries and stuff like this. Like Canadian art, from what I understand, like Canadian indigenous art, right, has for the last 10, 20 years or something, on a yearly basis is given returns of like, if you invested in the right artists, right, has given returns of like 30% yearly. Like that's huge, right? Personal finance is personal. That, that fi it's not just finance, it's personal finance. If you wanna just study finance, just pick up a finance book and start reading the terms and it's just ratios. But if you wanna personalize that, you have to take a look at yourself and figure out 
the economics of what are you interested in learning right the economics of raising children the economics of farming the economics of collecting the economics of teaching the economics of warfare the economics of ag agriculture what are you interested in very important question I sold my crypto recently for a loss to uh, release some uh, euros it really some pounds but I'm okay with it I enjoyed the overall process educating myself on crypto for sure booty here right one of the best ways to learn is to do right there's a saying when it comes in the gambling world right the the only way to learn how to gamble is to gamble right and if you're just getting into gambling and stock market is gambling buying cryptos and selling is gambling right the best way to learn or you should expect that the beginning stages when you're getting into something you're going to lose money right you're going to make bad choices or you're going to make choices that are going to teach you lessons and the lesson that you learn the cost of you know what it costs you that's how important that lesson was right yeah, many I would uh, have sold them at first increase. Yeah, woulda, coulda, shoulda is a bad mentality. Focus on the present. I 100% agree with Dante. Right? Oh, I should have. Man, there's comic books I passed on. Crazy, right? Crazy. Okay. Or I didn't. You know, I I didn't want to let go of this comic book to buy this comic book or I had two choices of comic books to buy I bought these ones instead of these ones right? coulda shoulda would have no man it's, it's, it's okay to keep those in mind right but don't take them personally don't take them seriously don't let them stress you out rich dad poor dad intelligent investor sample the power of success principle 100 life changing secrets of successful people change my life bro no joke mr one bitcoin rich dad poor dad intelligent investor uh mr one bitcoin uh if these are books and stuff like this if you're on our discord go to our discord and post them in uh, the book section or something right and there's two different book sections i think there's light and heavy I post them in the heavy that'd be great that way other people can read them too maybe I by chance came up across a game in my city and the lack of places that sell 3D printers. I made a really good return with two 3D printers and I'm ready to start a bigger business, but I don't want to to lose all that I have made. You could do a survey, I guess. And you don't have to go big. Uh, eight bit suitcase. You don't have to go big right away, right? You got two 3D printers. If they're running at full capacity, just buy a third one. Right? If that starts running at full capacity, buy a fourth one. Just go slow, right? And with technology, don't buy the 3D printers if you can leave, If you can cut a deal with the 3D printing printer maker, if they're really expensive, I haven't looked into how much they are. If they're really expensive, cut a deal with them and lease them, right? That way you can write off if you're if everything's on the up and up declaring everything, you can write off the cost of the lease on your taxes, and you can cut it if you know you should be able to cut a pretty sweet deal with the people making this product to upgrade to the new system when they come out and stuff like that, right? And if you do that, if you're on full capacity with two, if you cut a leasing deal, maybe you can get your hands on two more, right? grow exponentially right well the other one's exponential too but double your capacity and four going at full capacity get four four more get eight right i was gifted an amount of bitcoin on reddit in 2013 and i sold it during the peak in december 2017 infinite percent profit <laughs> yeah <laughs> That's it. I feel Bitcoin crypto needs a new brand in order to be more successful. People know the terms for the wrong reasons, and I think it's quite pro 
uh, prohibitive uh, to school. Uh, to a certain degree, I agree. And I also think it has to be simplified. It's too complicated stuff. Really, it's too complicated stuff. It's still too much of a niche. They weren't able to convince people to spend their cryptos, right? So crypto has been is being hoarded because people are assuming that it's gonna continue to go up in value. So they're, you know, if, unless they really need the money, they're not really selling. Unless they're savvy investors, they're not really selling. They're holding. If they're considering that to be a savings, which could be, buy one bitcoin. If you think it's gonna go to a million, just park it, right? If you're not into trading. But there are people who might be hoarding more, you know what I mean? They're not, they're not spending it like currency. It was being spent like currency at the beginning to a certain degree. People were giving it and passing it around. But now it's being hoarded, which is not the best thing to do if you want to introduce a new currency into the market, right? You guys have any snacks you're munching on? The odds are I'm going to list more comic books on eBay this month as well. Okay. Can I give you some background? Uh, Education-wise? Yeah, I'll give you education-wise. Education-wise, I got my degree as a geophysicist. I have a glass of water. glass of water is good. I always have a glass of water. I got my uh, education, my bachelor's in geophysics and a minor in mathematics. Okay. Yeah, I'll relate this to personal finance. Uh, I've always been interested in business. I'm eating cheese sticks and chicken. <laughs> Hardcore. <laughs> cheese sticks and chicken. That's good too. Um, so I've always been interested in sort of business and stuff like this. My first, here, I'll, here. I'll give you my first uh, business venture I ever had. Okay. I don't know if I've shared this with before. When I was in elementary school, right? This was my first business venture if I, that I remember. It might be other ones, a couple other ones before that, just random, but this was a big one, right? When I was in elementary school, in my city, the, and still this thing goes on, there's an amusement park, very little amusement, well, relative to Disneyland and stuff, and small, but in Vancouver, there's, there's an amusement park. And every year, for two weeks, there is Pacific National Exhibition comes in to this amusement park. So they bring in lots of concerts, and they bring in lots of animals, and they got the derby races going with cars crashing into each other those are super cool and stuff right so it's sort of like a fair thing that comes into this amusement park for two weeks out of the year and this was in the 1980s when i was in elementary school and i haven't been for a long time so i don't know if they have this now or not anymore but during that time there were no casinos in our city if you wanted to go if you want to gamble you have to go fly out to nevada go to the united or drive to nevada you have to go to nevada from canada to gamble right and we did so in the 1980s when this fair used to come they brought the animals they brought the circus acts some animal acts uh, derby destruct derby and stuff like this uh, concerts and they also brought games of chance okay so you know carnival games of chance so you know they had one thing you know they had the wheel with the arrow pointing and they spin the wheel it's like 
there's little sections you put your money on the the section you put a dollar on and the wheel spin the the thing spins the pointer spins and if one pointer stops where you had your money you get double your money if two pointers stop you get triple your money if three pointers stop you get like five times your money if four pointers stop you know they give you money they had other games of chance as well that was one of them they had they had lucky seven where they had a spin thing they spin that you put above seven below seven they had these things right one of the things they had they had everything <laughs> set up right where people stood here and then in the middle it was like a basically a, a square right so there's people standing here people standing here people standing here people standing here and it's maybe 10 meters by 10 meters right or let's say eight meters by eight meters or something like this right and inside this central area right now remember people are standing on the outside inside the central area they have like bowls and cups and plates and stuff set up and each one had a number so if you have pocket change you would take your pocket change and throw your change into the center and wherever your change landed you would go tell the the person that was there was usually two people that were or two or three people if they were busy they had people on either side like four corners have people watching this thing right so if you're let's say you flip a quarter or 10 cents and it landed in a bowl that's it three times so you would get your money back plus three times that right so for your quarter they would give you back I can't remember if it was 75 cents or a dollar right so it was like gambling because you were throwing change away it was chunk change right and it was crazy because anybody could do it. Even kids were doing this, right? It was like gambling for kids, right? Then <laughs> grown ups were doing it and stuff. And then they would come and give you change. So I did this a few times. I was like, hey, this is great. Fun, right? Doing it with my grandmas. The grandma you see me play backgammon with, right? I used to go to the fair with her. Right? And we, during that, when I was that young, I would play backgammon with her too, right? Hello. Great to see you back streaming. Camille Baronon, Baron, Baroness, how are you doing? Glad to be streaming, right? So they had this game. It was fun. So we went to this thing, and then, you know, I came home, and I sort of went, that's brilliant. I want to do, right? So the weekend came, okay? Friday, when I came home from school, right? I went to our garage and I told my mom and dad, don't park the car here. I'm setting something up to play games with the neighborhood kids, right? <laughs> and they said, okay. And my dad was in construction, so there was, we have wood and stuff. So I drew, I brought a chalk. I believe I brought a chalk and I drew a line of chalk. And I think I put two by fours or two by eights on the ground. So, you know, there was a ledge, right? And then I took a, another two by four, two by eight since if you're talking about gambling are you those win at blackjack strategists uh, i've done yes counting cards uh you can make it work but they changed the game in the 80s in las vegas you could still still play uh, blackjack with two decks blackjack right four decks in the late 80s early 90s and then they brought in the six decks and the promo shuffles and card counting and sort of out right so I set up draw a chalk put up two by four two by eight on the ground and then I put up a I think two by twelve or something like this that we had that was standing up and behind this thing I put I went into the kitchen and brought bowls and pots and cups and stuff and I put numbers on each one right? and I went and told the neighborhood the kids that I have a game, bring your change, here's what it is, Boom. right? A couple of people came on Friday, two, three, four people came on Friday. On Saturday, I had the place running for like four hours. Kids were coming, throwing their change, I was collecting change, right? They were running out of change, going home <laughs> and grabbing change and bringing it back and playing this game, right? Sunday came. Okay. I ran it again. Okay. 
And then we closed it because our family needed to go somewhere and stuff like this. I came home Sunday and my mom called me and said, Chicho, what are you doing in the garage, right? They went, I went, well, I've set this up. I showed her, I set this up, set this up, set this up. <laughs> There's this. She goes, you did what? I said, I did this. He goes, I'm having calls from our neighbors saying that their kids have been stealing the change jars at home and they're empty. I go, oh, that's cool. Here's the jars of change that I have. Like, seriously, I don't know how many jars of change. Like, I made a ton of money for some kid in, a, in elementary school. I made a lot of money, right? My mom's like, what? Oh, my God, we're new to this neighborhood. And we had just come recently from Iran, right, for a couple of years. They're like, we're new to the neighborhood. You're doing this, that must thing. You have to give all that money back to people. I go, wow, oh, I don't even know who threw what. Like, well, you can't give money back to people. And she goes, you have to give money back to people. You have to give it back. So I said, okay. So I took a jar, like, took my chain, put it on the side. And I opened up shop again, and kids showed up, and I said, listen, you know, you guys have been taking money from your parents without telling them stuff. I have to give you your money back. So I said, how much did you lose? And they said, oh, this much. And I said, I don't know that much. So I started started distributing a little bit of money i was like a just imagine this was my first lesson of being a, a understanding what the banking system is like or being one of the powers that be right i had multiple jars of change and people were coming to me saying oh i did this much i don't i don't know you did that much i think you gave this much so out of like three jars i returned like one jar one and a half jars mm -hmm. and i kept two two and a half jars because i had no idea who spent what right that's something about about me, right? Economics. Uh, so that was a great lesson. That was a great lesson. I, it was incredible, right? So when people tell me what what you should do as a personal finance, start experimenting in our current economic system. If you see something, if you think you're interested in doing that thing, try it out. Don't go get a loan on the house and mortgage out your family to do this thing because you don't know this thing but play around with it you learn things right blackjack is probably uh only one of the casino games you can have somewhat of an edge on i used to not anymore okay the best game in a casino i graduated into craps so if i ever walk into a casino i'm not interested in blackjack baccarat forget about it like i know people talk about it, but no man you want to play a gambler's game, right? The one that, in general, from my experience, you graduate to. And I've played a lot of poker and roulette and all the poker is huge, right? The one that, the only table game that's, for me, that holds any attraction is craps. Nothing comes close to it. I've always wondered, I believe you have a partner. Are they always out of the house when you stream? No, not necessarily. During your high streaming times, you must kick them out. <laughs> no, we're we have we have different rooms here. We have food. We have entertainment. We have internet. We have books. Uh, you can always find things to do. You can always find things to do. Well, poker is too, since you're playing against other players, not the house. Yeah. What do you think of universal basic and the future of robotics? Uh, we talked about universal basic income. I disagree with universal basic income. Because in the limit, it's totally, it'll destroy. It leads to a complete totalitarian state where the inequality will explode and it'll be a disaster, right? Uh, robotics automation is changing our economic current world dramatically. I hate losing money, so I don't like gambling. Now, Mr. Mr. One Bitcoin, good on you. Good on you. That said, there are amazing life lessons that I have learned about our society, about human nature, and about myself on the poker table, 
on the craps table in casinos dealing with people. I don't really gamble anymore. Very little. <laughs> Monopoly. Right? You guys have seen the live stream monopolies, right? But I don't frequent casinos. Right? Poker, I'll sit in, sit in on. We play with our family, we play board games. And just to spice it up, we throw a little change in there. Right? Chicho, I'm currently having my savings in an online bank. Any rare alternatives? Uh, if you're going to have your savings on an online bank, uh, Sleepy Ways, I would recommend distributing that to three or four different online banks and preferably one of them or two of them in person that you can go to and cash out some money if you need to and I would highly recommend not keeping all your um, savings in currency in a bank account uh, I would recommend you figuring out I mean right now it might be a tricky time because if there's a serious crash coming cash is king so you can gobble up some delicious stuff right but you definitely don't want to be 100% cash you definitely don't want to be 100% invested right so my recommendation would be don't keep everything in one place really don't do it it's not a good idea not a good idea especially not in our current economic mindset right I don't understand how UBI will lead to increased inequality. Uh, Olive, here's the way it's going to work, right? Who's going to hand out the hand out the UBI, universal basic income? The centralized power is going to hand out the universal basic income, right? It has to. If it's going to be universal basic income, it's going to be centralized power, right? Now, if you take this to the extreme limit, where there's a global uh, government then one location in that global government is going to hand out money to everyone. If that doesn't uh, raise red flags, you have to look into that, right? But let's assume it's going to be a country, universal basic income per country. Can you raise the gain slightly on the mic? Uh, sleepy waves, I'm pretty maxed out on this. I can talk closer. And usually I think what's happening is uh, during these live streams, as I keep on talking, my voice becomes lower and lower right uh, but I'll bring it closer I'll talk closer to the mic I'll bring it closer 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 okay. so let's assume you know so basic income is in the hand of a centralized federal government ruling body that governs over a country okay on the most basic level if you want to take the United States for example right we'll take one example Obama brought in the what was it called he gave semi uh dreamers the dreamers act where he allowed some of those who have entered the united states and been living and working in the united states illegally 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 for decades uh protection that they could continue and then the new administration came in and all of a sudden there's a database of all of these people some people have been saying this was a tag team that they wanted to create the debate database and then the republicans come in but that's going into theories right let's stay with the facts the new administration came in and they have this database and they with the central government policing ice they've been zapping people up right or sending letters to people now just imagine this with universal basic income universal basic income right let's assume one government says everybody's eligible to universal basic income another government comes into power right another party comes into power and that party all of a sudden criminalizes a certain type of behavior in that society right let's say prohibition on tomatoes anybody that's growing tomatoes is a criminal and governments have done this not necessarily tomatoes even though tomatoes uh, I believe there's a period in American history that tomatoes were even illegal right but many things could become illegal gold was illegal to hold at a certain point in US history right in the last hundred years right 
many things can be prohibited by governments so let's assume these governments a new party comes in and prohibits something in that society and anyone that is associated with this is now a criminal and then they say anyone that's a criminal cannot receive ubi universal basic basic income just like the way that anybody that has a felony conviction cannot get student loans cannot get uh, support for housing cannot get this cannot get this right all of a sudden all of a sudden inequality right that's on the most simple level did that answer your question all of once you centralize power that power can do whatever the hell it wants to the society and once you centralize power okay those who want to corrupt this society or control the society have their jobs cut out for them because they don't have to go all around the country to corrupt right to take over they just have to go to the central institution regulatory capture the centralized institution and control everything chicho how can you use a, a crash for his advantage chicho how can one use a crash for his advantage keep some cash liquid and buy 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 pretty much right and by the way that's one way short-term gain to a certain degree right the other way you could take advantage is come up with disruptive innovation that gives you alternatives to the systems that crashed the economy to begin with cryptocurrencies is one of them right cryptocurrencies blockchain technology came about because those who understand how our current economic system works have zero faith in its longevity right so you could create come up with disruptive innovation that challenges the status quo and yes i agree with you although the system is corrupt right now system is very corrupt right now crazy corrupt it, it's insane on every level uh, well that goes into politics and now i i can't i don't know if we talk too much politics or <laughs> Where we stay in economics. I think we stay in economics focused. I hope so anyway. I don't want to go down the the there's a fine line between politics and economics. I really want to stay on the economics front in these live streams. Salute. Cornelian cherry liqueur so so good there's a lot of opportunities right now there's a lot of opportunities for economic prosperity there are a lot of pitfalls right now no no mr one bitcoin i i'm old enough gray enough to be able to manage myself uh, no definitely not when you say system is corrupt what country system do you mean given that different countries have vastly different economic system china is very different to us to sweden to japan uh, to a certain degree but our global economic system right now the se the whole push towards centralization is completely corrupt china's uh, economic system is not very different than what the us is china's economic system is pure capitalism but it's china is considered to be just one huge corporation and it's business model is a capitalist business model willing to deal with anyone willing to trade anything willing to do this willing to do this so they're not very different on that front okay they might run their countries differently but there's major corruption in china as well every every centralized system is corrupt i don't know of any centralized system that is not corrupt our education is corrupt 
our healthcare system is corrupt, our economic system is corrupt, our banking system is corrupt, our, our tariff systems is, are corrupt, our political system is corrupt, our uh, food, uh, agriculture is corrupt, like everything is corrupt. I like to think people in power, elected democratically, wants the best for its citizens. I'm clearly naive, but I'm young, so it's allowed. Yeah, and Olive, uh, you're, you're an idealist, which is not a bad thing, right? But you need a dash of realism in there. It's amazing to want what's pure in the world, but it's also very prudent to realize how the world works, right? What we can do in our lives, we can incorporate that purity, the way we conduct ourselves. But when we conduct, when we deal with these systems, we always have to keep in mind what they are. Opportunities. I'm still broken. Yeah. Oppor sleepy waves, you don't need very much money to be able to generate money. Really, in my part of the world, here, if you drive around local communities, like in the suburbs, at the end of the month, at the beginning of the month, there's tons of free stuff being put out in front of people's houses where you can grab them. Walk around, find things that you found that you think are valuable, that you can fix. Gather them up, fix them up, do whatever you need to and sell them. You got them for free, you got exercise, you got a little bit of hobby going on, and if you're doing handiwork, live stream the stuff. So you're also doubling up, creating content, and sell the stuff. Worst case scenario, you spend some time walking, fixing things, learning, acquiring powers, tools. Now don't let it interfere with the anything else that is important in your life but if you're wasting your time you're bored if you're watching reruns of family ties i don't know that kind of or seinfeld like that kind of crap uh, go do this a little bit once you if you're if you're broke if you can generate a little bit of money that's a lot of money right just give me a buzzer <laughs> On that note, no. Definitely not. The flavor, though, is powerful, amazing. So good. You almost can can not have a decent 9 to 5 job as most benefits are negated by making people work as subcontractors for short periods of time. Yeah. But for me, I, I like contract work, personally. I think the 9 to 5 jobs where the company provides health care are to a certain degree could be a bigger problem than working contract because a lot of people work those jobs not because they're getting paid well but because they have medicare health care benefits right so they're basically slave to the benefits that the company offers even though they hate doing what it is that they're doing from nine to five one party government is it corruption or is it that we haven't developed new systems because everyone is so uh, complicit in how things work right now uh, that I think is it corruption there is corruption there's no doubt there's corruption in the, our current systems right we haven't developed new systems because everybody has too much vested in our current economic system right like as as bill hicks would say bill hicks has this routine seriously bill hicks if you haven't watched bill hicks or repertoire sit down and watch everything bill hicks did okay you will love him you will hate him you will call him a prophet okay there's one sketch bill hicks has is this he says it's basically it's the ride just do bill hicks it's a ride right b-i-l-l -L, bill hicks h-i-c-k-s bill hicks and then it's a ride where he says you know people confuse life 
what they're doing in their everyday life, the way they've learned to behave or been programmed to behave, they think that's real. But that's not real. That is one that, what they've been programmed to do. And a lot of people, because they think it's real, they will do everything to protect this thing, right? They will wage war. They will throw people in prison. They will support parties that, political parties that will inherently enslave them, right? They will do everything they can to protect this ride because they think it's real. But it's not real. It's just a ride. That is one of the most important bits of information everybody needs to get from our societies, our current economic system. Okay, it applies multifold to our current economic system. Okay, once you appreciate what that Bill Hicks segment is about, it will change your life. Right? Well, capitalism is a flawed economic system. But we don't know of a better one do we we don't know of a better one i don't know uh, on what level on a local level capitalism is definitely not the way to go if you want to build a community you definitely do not want to maximize your currency your profits for yourself you want to maximize the well-being of the community right so I, I disagree that capitalism um, if there is nothing better than that, capitalism just looking inside like families don't function as capitalist individuals right five people in the family are they all trying to maximize profits from the other the other four I don't think so hi Chicho how's the Sligger. I don't know what the that means. Sligger. Sligger. I don't know what a Sligger is. A matcher. Is, is it? Is it my liqueur? I'm almost to the end. Here's another Cornelian cherry. Here's another one. Real. Read capitalist realism. Is that a book, uh, Dante? I'm not an idealist. Idealism is a scary path, but we have to have some radical ideas to move forward. No, uh, I agree. Yeah, yeah, we do all of them for sure. Introduction of blockchain technology was a radical idea, right? There's been lots of radical ideas uh, in education. Ling grins <laughs> yes then this is it this was this much no it's this much this is a cornelian cherry liqueur that i made like two weeks ago so delicious man so delicious wow. have you tried the lemon cello it's great no I, uh maybe is that the italian drink the idea that we don't uh, can't do better than capitalism is self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, it's a book. Okay, cool. Capitalist realism. Yeah, I agree with Dante. We can do way better than capitalism. Jeez, so much better. <laughs> watch Star Trek. Really, watch Star Trek: The Next Generation. There's a there's an idea. Is that ideal? No, that is to a degree totalitarian militarist uh, universe, right? Maybe some people will consider it to be. Right? Is it true that gold investment isn't that good? Uh, depends why you're investing in it. Are you looking for a multi fold return in a short period? No. Getting tipsy? No, not getting tipsy, brother. Did you try Jägermeister? Yeah, I've tried Jägermeister. Yeah, for sure. Many, many moons ago. Many moons ago. My God, I haven't had Jägermeister forever. It feels like medicine. It's supposed to be good for you, actually. Good, uh, good minerals in there. Tahini. Small spoonful of tahini. I'm 
sourdough bread. By the, by the way, thank you for the follows. Thank you for the subs. Is that a dab? You slam and panic. <laughs> Not right now. Capitalism is really good, but it has to be controlled by some extent. There has to be alternate alternatives to capitalism. Um, and there's different types of capitalism, right? Everything shouldn't have, shouldn't be commodified, right? You shouldn't be able to buy everything for a certain type of currency, right? There are certain things that should never have a price tag on them. Capitalism doesn't account for that. How did you make your money? Do you have money? Uh, what is the, uh, Mr. One Bitcoin? What do you mean with money? Like how much money? Uh, I'm not really in debt. That's better than most people I know. <laughs> Gold investment for when, when other things lose value in a uh, situation like war. Thank you for your insight. Um, amigo, if I had money to spare where I was just investing, I wasn't investing in myself, I was investing in commodities and stuff like this and markets and whatnot, I would definitely have a certain percentage of my funds in gold and not gold certificates or gold companies and stuff like this. Physical gold I would acquire, right? And that's not for in that's not for to acquire lots of rate of return. That's for stability. That would be your lowest you could go, right? So that's one of the reasons some countries are acquiring gold, right? Because if they're acquiring gold, then they're raising the bottom that they can fall to, really. Because gold is not going to drop in value 50%. It's not going to happen again. Not well, You can't say it's not going to happen again, right? But I don't see it happening anytime soon. Any currency in the world right now can drop 50%, including the US dollar, right? So if you want to set a base to how poor you might be, not a bad idea to increase your gold reserves, hard gold, okay, physical gold. Unless you're a genius who can predict economic crashes, I wouldn't invest in gold because it's never going to turn a profit. Yeah, I agree to a certain degree with Dante. It will turn a profit depending on the time frame, right? Like I remember talking with someone before uh, the U.S., went into Iraq, right? And gold was trading around 200. And we we're talking about wars and stuff like this. And he, he kept on asking me, look, Chicho, is it a good idea to buy gold? We're going to go to war. Is it good? Gold always goes up. I go, dude, if you want to invest in that thing, yeah, gold is going to go up. Okay. And in 10 years, gold went from 200 to 1200 or something like this, right? That's not a bad return. But as I said, gold is sort of setting a base, how low you're going to be. Rel and it's all relative, right? Differential accumulation. Spider beans, how you doing? Oh, hey, Chicho, forgot you were streaming right now. <laughs> on a Sunday. No, Sunday, what am I saying? On a Tuesday. On a Tuesday at 1 p.m. Nice to have you, spider beans. What do you think of uh, Peter Schiff's doom saying and calling the whole U.S. economy a bubble? The U.S. whole... The, Peter Schiff is, is not, he's not Doom's uh, saying. He's just saying that the whole U.S. economy is in a bubble. And it is. Like, can the bubble continue? Yes. Have they inflated the bubble for 10 years? Yes. Like, 10 years, the bubble has grown, right? If you want to extend it past that, for 20 years, the bubble has grown with like these types of events. Peter Schiff is not wrong on his thesis. Where he's wrong is on his timing, right? Peter Schiff's timing is off. Will he nail it right now? Is the whole US economy gonna blow up? Maybe. 
what do you think about uh, Jeffrey Epstein and his hedge fund, <laughs> Wall Street? As as Stanley Kubrick has been uh, has has been alleged to have said by Nicole Kidman, uh, the world is run by pedophiles, right? Jeffrey Epstein is on that front of Wall Street, Hollywood, the government. There are a tremendous number of people in those institutions, systems that are associated with the people of Epstein. Right? Incredible that one of the greatest news stories, and it's related with economics as well because it was Wall Street, right? Made a blip once for a few weeks, disappeared, right? Because the person was sent to low security jail where they go home during the day and do whatever he wanted to do and then go home to a, a cell and sleep and then do the same thing the next day. And then it hit again, made the news for a couple of months and then went away. How is that possible? I hope you're doing really well, man. You should, Spider Beans. You should check the Surge Patreon out when you're free. The link should be back up. It should be back up. Okay, I'll check it out, Beans. Thanks. I went to it. It was like, I saw his video too, his two minute video. That he, he's saying, in the olden days, uh, if you were a conductor or something, you would have patrons, wealthy patrons, that would sponsor your symphonies and stuff like this. And he's saying, oh, I have a lot of stuff I want to do and you guys are my patrons so he set up a patron page which is fantastic which is basically what all of us every creator is doing saying hey you value this product you value this voice this sound this creation support it let's decentralize the arts decentralize information decentralize entertainment more power to search Tahini with honey is delicious, very delicious. Peter Schiff is a nobody. I read War is a Racket after your recommendation. That was an eye opening read. Indeed, Olive. Indeed. Don't listen to anyone worth less than one billion in the bank. <laughs> uh, I would I would disagree. Play the stocks. How do you know Peter Schiff ain't a bozo? He might be a bozo, he might not be. He seems pretty legit to me. Uh, play the stocks. It seems pretty legit. Because billionaires are going to tell you the truth. <laughs> and dude, play the stocks. What is your purpose in life? Ask yourself that. Is it to acquire a fiat currency in the billions? Is that is that your, your purpose? Or is your purpose to thrive as a human being and create, share, dance, sing, eat? Party, read, learn, grow, be happy, be healthy. What does fiat currency have to do with that? I, I've known wealthy people. I've known poor people. I've been very wealthy. I've been very poor. Uh, I can honestly tell you, the ratio of those who are happy to those who are poor is the same no matter where you are uh, um, those who are happy and those who are not is the same no matter where you go if you go super rich or super poor it's the same the number one cause of misery is ill health stay healthy you're on a phenomenal road to live your life but it's hard to do all you want to do with no money agreed all of when i say billionaires and poor super wealthy and super poor for sure you need a certain amount of money if you want to call it currency disposable income to be able to 
live your life properly all right what happens though is there's a lot of people that chase the carrot right they set up a plan to make this much money and then once you reach a certain level once you rise up in the social framework of things you notice more things and when you notice more things you go oh look at that thing look at that carrot and then you try to get that to that carrot and then when you get up there you go oh look at that carrot right and there's people above you dangling these carrots right so you have to be wise enough to know when if enough is enough when when you've spent enough time to acquire a certain amount of safety net where you're comfortable to explore your own consciousness right on an economic front to build your family friends relationships right to acquire additional knowledge that you can learn about some type of system that you wanted to learn it's not about not having money or having money it's about knowing how much you need and being able to balance out your life with the things that money can't buy okay a lot of people assume that money can buy them everything they reach a certain level they realize that money can't buy them everything but they're trapped they already sacrificed so much that their money couldn't buy for them to get those back they would have to sacrifice everything they work towards a lot of people are afraid to let that go right and they live a miserable existence until they die as you as you start acquiring wealth always re-examine your life try to figure out what gives you pleasure what does not try to reduce the things that don't give you pleasure and increase the things that do give you pleasure but always at the background try to make sure you're able to maintain your life and you're not leaning on every now and then you may have to lean on others to help you out but make sure you're not always leaning on someone else that you've built yourself enough support that others can come and lean on you as well build your communities okay build your relationships because when all is said and done a billion dollars in the bank is not going to make you happy save your life give you love okay poor or rich it is just different type of problems uh, it's just that wealth gives you security to a certain degree as biggie would say more money more problems right there's a lot of people that i know that have a ton of money and they're leveraged to the tilt right they're chasing that growth man if there's a hiccup in the economy their value and i've seen this in the past their value is going to go from here down to here what ben how are you doing long time no see some guy once said being poor isn't having little but wanting much do you think rich people laugh differently <laughs> i don't know there are rich people that i've met that there's a certain uh, type of entitlement to the laugh there's poor people that i've met that there's a certain type of entitlement to their laugh right so it really depends on people i've met rich people who have fake laughs i've met poor people who have fake laughs and fake laugh you can you can catch right especially when it's really they've been doing it for a long time who do you think is more likely to win the space race Elon Musk or Jeff Be uh, Bezos and do you believe their intentions for exploring space are non-selfish um, I think Musk I think Musk and Bezos have both have the same puppet masters right to a certain degree um, are they selfish I don't know them I don't know them personally I really don't know who's gonna win the space race uh, there is 
there's China's in the space race, Russia's in the space race, uh, uh, India's in the space race, Iran's now in the space race, uh, North Korea's in the space race. Who's going to win the space race? Uh, US, is U.S. ahead? From what I understand, they were using Russian satellites to get their s Russian uh, spacecraft to get their satellites into space until a few years ago, right? So who's ahead in the space race? I don't know. Elon Musk. Elon Musk. I don't know. A lot of Cornelian cherries. Oh. It's too delicious. I didn't time it properly. <laughs> I should have brought the big jar. <laughs> Next year, I'm going to make a couple of more jars of that stuff. It's super delicious, man. Super delicious. What do you guys think is a good investment right now? Where should people invest their money? That, not on the level of multi-billionaires, but for me and you, for us that have, you know, not, not much disposable funds, that have a certain amount of knowledge, certain type of knowledge, that have a certain amount of uh, belief system in our society that you're here watching this live stream and me doing it, right? What do you think is a good investment right now in terms of personal finance? Education? Learning, if you're educating, learning programming is a good idea. Do you have like a percentage-based ratio you use as a guideline for what you uh, give uh, what you give your income where I distributed no not really I sort of play around and depending what I'm doing um, for me I don't recommend my lifestyle to everyone really I, I really don't because it is but I function on this well right it is just what it is right um, so for me there's certain things I do uh, certain places I spend money on, certain places, certain people I spend money on and money with, right? How do you think virtual entertainment will affect the physical economy? I think it's huge. I think it's already uh, affecting it in a big way, right? There are many people who are, uh, for short periods anyway, I don't know how long this lasts, but there are many people that I've known that are very, very happy living in a studio apartment uh, making just enough money to maintain their lives but they're some of the most top people online in whichever uh, platform uh, they've uh, they've decided to spend a lot of time on so they got a lot of currency in that platform right so it really depends like for me uh, I distribute a lot of my resources towards live streaming towards creating videos uh, towards the social platforms and creating content so that's a place that i put a lot of my resources in right uh, investing six robot companies those will be yielding huge returns in a decade or two you think so maybe i don't know i don't know the sex uh, trade for sure will especially if everything goes belly up, right? It'd be disastrous. It'd be disastrous. Like I've heard about 30% for living expenses, 30%. Oh, is that what you mean? 30% uh, to invest and the other is usually taxes. Yeah, if you're making money, the, the way it works is this. Uh, living expenses, in general, in my part of the world, they, they say you should, you should account for 30% being rent 30 percent being food and 30 percent going towards taxes and entertainment and ex other expenses healthcare and uh, sorry uh, 20 percent all that stuff and 10 percent should go into savings or something or five percent should go into savings uh, for sure where i live rent is more like more like 40 percent food is more like at least 30 percent 30 to 40 but there's only 20 percent to play with right and that percentage really changes as soon as you break certain barriers right as soon as 
the ratio for someone making fifty thousand dollars is a lot different than the ratio for someone making two hundred thousand dollars someone making two hundred thousand dollars are they going to spend the same percentage on food as someone making fifty thousand dollars if they're eating out every day then fine but they're going to be paying a lot for their health care issues that they're going to have later down the road right uk andy sexy youtube most of the companies are going to crash by then yeah the sex robot companies invest as specific companies you think have a future yeah you've got to do research with dante 100 percent. you really have to do research and there's going to be companies that are run well in your industry and companies that are run poorly in your industry you can buy the ones that are run poorly once they crash and then one of the companies mergers and acquisitions that higher up they come and gobble this one up and they pay a little bit more oh dante thank you very much thank you very much yeah but i i've been making like thirty thousand a second anarchy rm thirty thousand a second thirty thousand k a second <laughs> uk and you're i think i think you're gonna find other streams where you can uh, enjoy your indul uh your kinks yeah i've invested into tomatoes and suddenly i got one mil Tomatoes might not be a bad idea depending on where you are. VR is going to only get bigger. People want to escape from reality. Plus, it has its own culture that is more free to do its uh, its anonymity. Uh, agreed. Virtual online is huge. That's one of the reasons I'm here. Is it going to be VR? Is it going to be this? Is it going to be podcasting? Is it going to be uh, videos? Is it going to be blogs oh Bobby big noob you know what Bobby big noob I'm quick on let's check this out hey what's going on it's weird that the we get the troll actions towards the, towards the end of the streams Ready Play Ones. I'm ready for the Oasis from Ready Play One. Oh, Ready Play One. I remember that. What's the price of gold right now? I think gold is sitting around 1550 or something like this. Or 1500, let's say. But I would say that flipping uh, treasure trail items is better because of uh, for, uh, fortunate components always being in demand. I'm not trolling. You're not trolling? Okay, man. Man, that guy. He's saying he's not trolling, so I don't know. Bobby Big Knob. Aren't you tired of the noise in the world? Would you like a place to come and play on an intellectual level and learn? Or do you just want to contribute to the noise in the world and get lost, lose yourself, go insane? I'm kidding, Bobby, big knob. We had some trolls coming during a math stream yesterday. It was just like, man, you're trolling a math stream? You gotta be kidding me. Thanks for asking, Dante. If it goes over, if it, if it goes over, I'm pretty intellectual. I scored 100 on my IQ test. Um, I think you need some more work to do, brother. How would you, how would a VR economy work? if value is totally made of creativity how would a vr economy work if value is totally made of creativity totally made of creativity how would a vr economy work if value is totally made of creativity I don't see the discrepancy in that uh, big suitcase. Um, I'm not sure how it wouldn't have value. 
now that cannabis is being legalized here and there, would that be a smart investment? All of um, one thing I have been tracking is some of the cannabis companies that have already crashed, right? I'm trying to see where the bottom is. Some of them have already dropped like 70, 80 percent from their peak, right? I'm looking at them, seeing what they do. When they hit 90 percent relative to their peak, I start seriously looking at those companies. So to to answer your question some of the cannabis companies will definitely be an amazing place to invest in it's a matter of timing yeah but volume is the only indicator you need and all others are stupid let's be honest volume is it i hope not <laughs> it's a technical thing all right next question yeah already read that next is it someone let me know if it is i'll stop using it i really like using it seriously i love that word because it it means something it's a stronger stronger nobody knows really <laughs> it's a stronger version it's a, it's a stronger word than ignorant I would be concerned that VR would go the way of 3D TVs. I can't imagine enough people sitting at home and using it outside the initial novelty factor. Birdie, I don't know. I think if, when it comes to uh, the erotica, it, it might be a huge place, right? Personally, I played the VR games a few months ago. I did the most recent one, like three months ago, four months ago. I played the VR game. It was okay, right? The motion sickness wasn't there as much when I was playing, but man, when I took it off, the motion sickness had built up. So I felt nauseous for like six hours afterwards. So I personally would not, I wouldn't play, I wouldn't get VR games unless it's holographic where I'm inside, right? And that would even be a little weird, right? Why do you live in this <laughs> thing? Bamboo. VR is advancing very quickly and it has been coming for decades. I would say it's an advancement to normal video games. Okay. Everything's so PC these days, it's crazy. Alright? V see here's the thing vr is going to grow but what's this growth rate going to be is there something else going to come up or is there something else coming up right now that has a faster growth rate than vr i haven't looked into it too much facebook is heavily invested in it which is one reason i really don't like it do you think uh, cryptocurrencies are an actual investment or more of a ponzi scheme um, there's a lot of different cryptos out there, right? Uh, over 2,000 now, maybe close to 3,000 now, right? Majority are Ponzi scheme, right? So you have to look into which cryptos uh, you're interested in. Look at their business model. The early ones, they're established right now, right? They will be around. Blockchain technology is going to be around. Bitcoin is going to be around. Uh, Ripple is going to be around. Ethereum is going to be around right all those ones are going to be around what their value is going to be who knows right will it continue to go up possibly yeah very very possibly to a certain degree some would say right uh, but it really depends on the on the business model right what is their value added uh, feature right what did Bitcoin, Ethereum, take your pick, right? What are they adding to our society? What is their worth? Okay. Is it anonymity? To a certain degree, yes. Some would say that's much less now than it was a few years ago. Is it growth? Is it an investment? I don't know. If I had lots of cash, I'd park some money in there just for the Hail Mary, 
roll the dice, right? But don't park all your expense, all your expense money there. That'd be crazy. That's all your eggs in that basket. That's pretty risky. That's pretty risky, right? That's pretty risky. Public structured information, third party system that can be used for many things. Yeah. Yeah. If you stay within cryptos, you got anonymity, you got privacy. Do you have liquidity? You can liquidate from one crypto to another, but at a node when you if you want to convert to a fiat an enemy is gone you can still do business trade uh, barter support systems that you like anonymously without a doubt if you want to buy something in a store go up to the owner of the store right and say hey listen I want to buy this I don't have any cash but do you accept cryptos if the owner says I do, then say, hey, listen, this thing's worth $8,000. How about if I transfer over one Bitcoin to you? Because Bitcoin is like $3,200, $3,300 right now. That is a completely anonymous private transaction that's taking place. Powerful. 3D printers are a good investment. They're getting really cheap and versatile while there, there are advanced industrial grade 3d printers that are expensive yeah the technology is going to get cheaper and cheaper that's what i'm hoping for personally because there's definitely certain things that i would love to on this table right now if i had the funds and i had 3d printers were cheap enough i wouldn't mind getting my hands on something and the the stuff that they were making whatever it is you're making wasn't toxic i would love to create some certain things for the household for sure that'd be amazing right that'd be amazing what a chill stream that was great been going at this for a couple of hours um, 8-bit suitcase thanks for the info regarding the 3d printers and VR as well right uh, virtual reality and 3d printers I'll I'll try to put them on my radar uh, keep track and see where they're going um, and Dante thank you for taking care of business uh, everybody else thank you for being here in the discussion do you think the big banks are all in bed with criminal entities pretty much for me personally finding out one of the big banks in UK HSBC HSBC is horrendous was laundering drug cartel money yeah, HSBC is one of the worst ones, right? But all the main banks do. Hey there, friend. Hope you're good. Green Tech, how are you doing? How's life? Welcome to the end of our stream. Forgot to end the sentence. Yeah, I forgot. you forgot to end the sentence. Cartel money. Yeah, HSBC was horrendous, right? In Mexico. And they don't... The, the fine that they gave HSBC and all the other banks was equivalent to like one hour of their revenue coming in or one day's worth of revenue one day's worth of profits like that's the fine just imagine if for 365 days a year you're scamming somebody for one thousand dollars a day and then the government finds out and they come to you and say bad boy bad girl you're a bad human being don't do it again here's your fine one thousand dollars you just raked in $365,000 and they fine you $1,000. Really? That's supposed to be a deterrent? Ending sentences is overrated. Don't worry, man. <laughs> okay, gang. Let's call this a stream. Let's call this a stream. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for uh, the discussion. It was fun. Sorry if I went overboard a little bit. I'm... Uh, been following too much nasty political economic news so my patience was a little short my patience became a little short after the trolls came in yet yesterday during the math stream it was like man 
Don't do that during a math stream, you silly little buggers, right? Have a good rest of your day, Chucho. You too, Green Tech. You too. Have fun, gang. And I'll probably announce uh, more videos, most likely, or more streams uh, for the weekend. Okay. It was real fun. Take care, man. You too. You too. Have fun, everyone. Bye for now. Thanks, Dante. I appreciate it.